second episode of the Night Sky Explorer series with Astro Bob. If you haven't yet downloaded the phone app, go ahead and do that as we get started so you'll be able to fully participate tonight. And a couple other notes, as we get started, go ahead and give us a shout out in the Zoom chat box or Facebook comments and tell us where you're watching from. We'll also have that the, in the chat box, um, links to post when Bob refers to them. And you can also post your questions there and we'll have a question and answer session at the end. So now I'd like to go ahead and introduce Astro Bob. He fell in love with the night sky and astronomy when he was a kid, and he continues to love sharing that passion with people of all ages. He was a photographer and photo editor at the Duluth News Tribune for 39 years before retiring in 2018. He taught at University of Minnesota Duluth Planetarium, has written three books, and has his own astro blog. So please welcome Astro Bob. Well, hi, everyone. Good to be back again. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you out there, uh, knowing that you've been looking at the night sky. At least I hope you've had a chance to look at the night sky. Uh, we've had some clear nights here where I live. Some have been a little cold, but the frogs have returned. So we have signs of spring, plus the moon has been waxing over the past few nights. I do hope you've been able to get out and see the moon and also the planet Venus in the western sky, among some of the other star groups that we talked about last week going to check out some of those current events right now by switching over to a picture for you. Maybe this looks familiar to some of you. I took this photo just a couple of nights ago when the moon, that's the moon, believe it or not, on the left and Venus is on the right. You may have seen that beautiful conjunction. The reason they look kind of blurry here is because there were thin clouds up there. So when I took the time exposure, they kind of fluffed out a little bit, looked like a pair of bright eyes up there. So that was just two nights ago when the moon passed by Venus. When two objects line up in the sky close together, we call that a conjunction. So there are always new conjunctions every month and they're always something to look forward to because they're very pretty arrangements of some of the brightest celestial objects in the night sky. We are going to go to the next view here and talk just for a moment about the moon before we launch into our main topic, which is the Starlink satellites and also how to use the app that I talked about last week, that free star chart app. Here's an animation showing you what the moon is doing this week. Uh, we begin here with April 28th, which is today when the moon will be, there it is, in Gemini. And then it moves 29, 30, 31, 1, 2, 3, 4. Notice that it's traveling to the left or to the east during the coming days. At the same time, its phase is filling out from half to two-thirds to almost full. That two-thirds phase is called the gibbous phase. And the moon shifts from constellation to constellation each night, moving about one fist to the left. That pink curve, that little arc that you see there, that's called the ecliptic. That's the path of the planets, the moon and the sun across the sky. That's where you always will find those celestial bodies. The reason why the moon is moving like that each night apace is because it's revolving around the earth. Here you have the moon's phases. Off to the right, there's the sun in this direction. Here's the earth in the center. Here is the moon orbiting the earth. And as the moon's angle changes with respect to the earth and the sun like this, it goes through phases. When we see it almost lined up with the sun, it's just a skinny crescent. But right now, come April 30th, which is just on Thursday, the moon and the earth and the sun make this perfect right angle. And so the moon will be exactly half lit. And then as it keeps sweeping along, oh, pardon me, keeps sweeping along its orbit, it fills out more and more until full moon on May 7th, a full flower moon, uh, when it will be completely lit up by the sun and exactly opposite the sun on the other side of the earth. And it comes around, swings around two thirds of the way and it's, or three quarters of the way, and it's called the last quarter moon. That happens on May 14th. And then in the morning crescent after that, and then it resumes its cycle and does it all over again. So 
as the moon revolves around the earth, we see it march across the sky, roughly one fist held at arm's length each night. Now, I wanted to talk about the Starlink satellites, and there's a lot of excitement and some consternation about the Starlinks because, uh, the, because there are just so many of them. Uh, they were, the most recent launch was on April 22nd, and uh, currently they are up there and visible from various locations across the country. Uh, here they are. This is kind of an artist's view of them. Little Starlink satellites here with an accordion-like solar uh, panels. That's how they get their energy, their power from the sun. And what's interesting about them is they are really a group of satellites that when they're all linked together, will allow for global internet access. They were launched by SpaceX, which is a company run by Elon Musk. And there are presently 420 of these satellites in orbit. That sounds like a huge number, but it pales compared to how many will be launched. When the full number is up in orbit, there will be 12,000 of these satellites. And when they were all linked together, forming kind of a net around the Earth, uh, you will have global internet service. The purpose of that is for anybody to get it, including remote areas that right now have absolutely no access. Uh, the concern is, of course, is that so many of these satellites are going to be visible that they may interfere with the natural night sky. Because after all, there are only worldwide something like 9,800 stars visible on a dark night. So these satellites will actually outnumber the stars that we see. Many of them will be faint because they'll be in higher orbits, but quite a few will be low enough so that we can see them. They are, that said, they are very exciting to see, and I thought it would be good for you to know more about them so as to anticipate it and learn what's kind of going on literally above our heads. Here's what they look like. If you've ever been to a wedding, uh, sometimes you might be asked to stack the chairs after the wedding is done or an event. These satellites, 60 of them are stacked at a time inside the nose cone of a rocket called a fairing. That's the part that sits at the top of the rocket. And you can see all 60 of them right there. Then the rocket is launched when it reaches the orbit. They are dispersed. They're, this opens and they spread out into a line of 60 satellites. They literally unfold and then those solar panels unfold and then they take their position in orbit. During this time where they're still near one another, and this usually happens up to two to three days or so after the launch, you can go out and see this unbelievable string of bright little lights across the sky. And I've got a video for you right now so that you can see that for yourself. Jackie, if you want to click that on. Look at that. Those, uh, my, my daughter had a her first view of them just a week ago and could not believe her eyes. She described it. She says, Dad, what's happening? It looks like there's a hole in the sky that these satellites are coming out of. So it was an amazing view. There they are. And they'll gradually be dispersed. They'll be put into separate orbits, but they are often lined up like that. Over time, the separation will increase between the satellites. Almost every night I go out, because there are 420 of these, almost every night I see some Starlink. So you can always tell a Starlink satellite because it's another one will follow right behind it. It might follow by a second or two, or maybe 30 seconds, but they all kind of follow the same track in the night sky. And if you could take me back live. Hello again. So we have our Starlink satellites. You got to see that video there. Uh, what I'm going to do next is take you to a website where you can find out exactly when those Starlinks will pass over your location. Let's see if we can do that now. Hmm. I'm having a little trouble with that. Oh my gosh. Jackie, I might need your help here. Hmm. 
This is the Heavens Above website, and you will find this link. It's going to be posted for you to go to at voyagers.org slash dark sky, along with several other links that we'll be talking about today. Uh, here it is, Heavens Above, one of the best satellite viewing sites or uh, sites where you can see what's happening. If you come down here on the left side of the page and you click on the blue link that says Starlink passes for all objects from a launch, and Jackie, if you would click on that, please. It's under satellites down below, Starlink passes for all objects from a launch. You will get, well, you have to put in your location first. I'm, I apologize for this. This uh, unfortunately is, let's see if we can make this happen. No. All right. Uh, unfortunately, this part is not working for us today, uh, but I want to explain in any case, you go to the site and you can type in your location, which is in the upper right hand corner of the screen where it says anonymous login. You can put in your location, log in, tell it to save, and then go back anytime. Then return to the front page and click on that Starlink passes for all objects from a launch. And what you'll see in front of you is a list of all of those passes and times. And you can go there and get a map, like a little miniature version of the planetsphere that will show you exactly where to look. Just like the planetspheres we talked about last week. So with that, if we could go back live for a minute. So once again, we, I, we have a glitch there. Uh, unfortunately, we're, I was not able to do that page live for you on my own. Uh, so we will go to our next item here that I wanted to explain. And that is, and I do hope that you've downloaded this and that you have it handy. Remember last week we talked about Starlink satellites? or pardon me, he's talked about using this app called Star Chart. Very easy to use. I want you to fire up your phone right now. And for fun, just to see how it works, take your phone and lift it up, point it to the sky the same way that I'm doing here. Look at that. And if you do this, you're going to see that the sky view is live. As you move the phone, you're seeing different constellations, and you're also seeing the sun and some of the planets as you move it about. Once the phone recognizes your location, and it does this automatically, it might take just a few seconds. Once it recognizes where you're at, then it will show you the sky exactly the way it is at your house. And what's cool is that you can see the sky in the daytime too. But of course, it's much more useful at night. So you point it at the sky. I want to point out down at the bottom, you'll see a dark area there. That's the point where it's below the horizon. And the light colored blue is the point above the horizon. So play around until you come to, and I want you to find, the first thing I want you to find is to turn your phone so that the sun is in the center of the view. You got that? Take the sun and put it in the center. Once the sun is in the center, take your thumb or a finger, press it to the screen, and slide a little bit. When you do that, you will see that you now have manual control of the screen. You can tell the phone, the app, what direction you want to look in, and you can also change the time. I'm going to switch over. Oh, dear. Unfortunately, I have no way, I, I need Megan's help here. I have no way to share anymore. I have lost my ability to share. Oh. Let's see if we can get there. Oh, I just found it again, pardon me. All right, we are going to share this view of our slides. 
And here you have uh, the phone view. I took a picture of the phone. And this is what you should see if you pointed your phone towards the sun. Uh, I've got this set for the western sky at 4.15 my time, which is central time. And take your phone now and use your fingers to pinch the screen in so that you get the widest view of the sky. It usually takes just one pinch. Then, as I showed you, you press the screen and drag so that you put the letter W right near the bottom of the phone. And now you manually control the phone. When you're using the phone, notice here that the dark part, the really dark, almost blackish part of the view is what's below the horizon. The horizon is right there where the dark blue meets the light blue. So everything above that horizon is what you can see when you're pointed towards the west. And that's W, and that stands for west. Now I want you to tap this time in the upper right of the phone. You're going to notice that you now control the time. For instance, it's now set for April 28th, 2020, or it should be on your phone. And your phone will say something like 1615, which is 415. That's the time right now, 415 central time. It might say a different time, but give a similar view if you live in New York. But I'm stuck here in the central time zone. What's interesting about this time thing is that you can adjust the time now. Notice a scroller shows up on the right hand side. You can take the scroller and spin it with your finger slowly. Do it slowly because it's rather sensitive and advance the time or go backwards in time or you can tap 16. You can tap the hour and then go back using the scroller hour by hour or you can change the year by touching 2020, change the month by go ahead and touching April or the date. So you have complete control of the time here, which is really fun because you can go forward in time to see what's happening, or you can go backwards in time too. So you can plan. If you want to know what's happening tomorrow morning, you can put it on April 29th, 2020 at four o'clock in the morning and then see the sky all around the way it is then. It's kind of like a planisphere, but much better because it also shows the planets too. The planets will always be along this dashed line here called the ecliptic, the path of the planets, as will the sun. And there's a couple of planets there, Uranus, Mercury, and the sun are kind of clustered together right now in the constellation of Aries. All right, if, you're, if you've got this, on the phone and if you're close to this time that's great now i want to take you i want you to do a little thing i want you to change the time to tonight you see you keep the date the same the month the year change it to 2130. this time will always be given in 24 hour time so 12 is equal to noon 13 is one o'clock 18 to 6 o'clock, 21 is 9 p.m. So change it to 21.30. And I'll give you a second to do that. Again, you can, probably the easiest way is just to click on the hours and then scroll to 21. And then you can refine it by clicking on the minutes and getting right to 9.30. When you do, check this out, you can see Venus from your location at that hour. You'll see Venus. In the western sky, that's what the W stands for down here. And then above Venus is that constellation we looked at last week, that Pentagon called Auriga, the chariot driver, right there. To the left of Auriga, there's the moon, and the moon's in the constellation of Gemini, the twins. Those are the two bright stars in Gemini called Castor and Pollux. And then we have Orion still lingering down here. Now I'd like you to tap on this bright star right here in Orion. That star is named Betelgeuse. Wonderful name. Someone asked me last week what was my favorite star, and I said Betelgeuse. Still is this week, too. So you tap on that star, and when you do, you're going to see uh, some information show up. Right down below Betelgeuse. Pardon me, we're going to go back. When you do, you're going to see down here the name of the star. You tap on the name of the star and you're gonna get this information. It's got all kinds of things like the temperature and how far away it is and how bright it is and so on. 
anything you touch on your screen, you tap on using your finger, it will show the name at the bottom. You click on the name and you'll get this screen. Now, if you want to go back to the sky, you just swipe it down. Go ahead and do that. Just swipe the screen down and out of the way and you're back on the sky. And if you ever get stuck where that little circle is still moving around the object you selected, just tap on a blank spot in the sky and you'll go back and you'll see the normal sky. All right, ready to sweep around the heavens? I think you guys are. Press your finger to the screen again and slide the screen to the right until the letter S shows up on the bottom. That's the direction south. And when you do, right at the horizon line there, there's S, here's our horizon once again. The dark area is below, the light is above. When you look south, way up high on your screen, you're gonna see this constellation called Leo the Lion right there. And then a couple of other fainter groups that include sextons and hydra and crater the cup and so forth. All right, we're gonna continue. Let's face east. Push your finger against the screen. Look down at the bottom for the E. And look at that, there's Arcturus and Boötes. Remember the ice cream cone constellation from last week? There it is, right there, about halfway up at 930, 2130 in the eastern sky. Right below it is the little horseshoe of Corona Borealis. Who remembers the name? If you said Northern Crown, congratulations, you're right. Uh, we'll keep going. We're going to face to the north and see part of the Big Dipper up there. There's the bucket. Uh, there's the Little Dipper. Way down here, low in the northwestern sky at 930, is the W of Cassiopeia. And get this, this is really a fun function of the phone. Normally, we hold our phone vertically, right, up and down. But if you now turn your phone sideways, you'll get a horizontal view of the sky, and you'll see much more of the big picture this way. And then when you turn it back vertically, like you're gonna do next, then you'll get the vertical screen. If you point your phone to the top of the sky, then you're going to see what's directly over your head. And if you do that at 9.30 tonight in late April, uh, by gosh, you're gonna see a lot of the Big Dipper up there. It's super high up in the sky. Uh, if you haven't pinched in yet to zoom, you can unpinch. Again, I've got it there on the left. You could pinch in to zoom into an object or a constellation or unpinch to zoom out. What else do we have? Oh, here's the fun part, okay? Your settings. We're just going to look at a couple of different settings. We're going to kind of go into things to show you how to customize your view of the night sky. And that's one of the wonderful things about this free app is that you can uh, make these little adjustments so you can have the sky just the way you like it, aesthetically pleasing or with as much information or as little as you want. On an iPhone, settings looks like a gear. And on an Android, it's three bars. So you click on that gear or the three bars and you navigate into the menu for the phone. These are the settings, star chart settings. Here's the back button, by the way. When you're done doing your customizing and you wanna get back to the starry sky view, you just click back and you're good to go. The most important thing you wanna do with your phone before you go out at night is to, no surprise, put it in night mode. You set it to night mode, you tap back to return, and this is what you get. You, everything turns nice and red for you. Why red? Because your eyes are less sensitive to red light. And so you don't overwhelm them with brightness. You can look at the stars and still keep your night vision. Otherwise, if you hold a brightly lit phone up to the sky, with all that blue light, you're not gonna be able to see the stars well. So put your phone into night mode by clicking on the gear or the bars, going into settings, and just tapping night mode. Let's see what other fun things we can do. There's two different menus actually in the phone. This is our first tier, the main menu, but you can also go deeper into the menu. I want you to click display settings now. And you can see all the different things you can change. When it's green, that means that 
that function is on, that feature is running, right? So I put the ecliptic in, that line for the planets and the sun and the moon. I left it on, but I could unclick this and it would disappear. You can also remove or add lines to the constellations. So you can connect the dots with lines or you can get rid of the lines and just have the stars themselves. Images down here, those are mythological depictions. You may wanna see what each figure represents in the sky, like Orion the hunter, Taurus the bull, Ursa Major, the great bear. You can add or subtract, and you can do the same with their Latin names. You can label all the stars. You can get rid of the planets. You can include the planets. What we're going to do, pardon me, is we're going to click on the lines, and I'm gonna get rid of those for you. There you are. No constellation lines, just stars. Then we'll go back into that menu, and I'm going to unclick the star labels. Or, oh, pardon me, I misspoke. Click the star labels so we see all the star names. Very cluttered, right? Very cluttered, but you may wanna just look at it once or twice and then go back and remove those names too. It's just an option. And the final thing that I wanna show you, and there are many things on the phone. Uh, if we had an hour, we could go through them all but I wanna show you something called Messier objects. You see it there under the word labels, right down here. Uh, Messier objects are a catalog of galaxies, star clusters, and nebulas in the sky that this French guy named Charles Messier, he was an astronomer of the 18th century, he made this catalog of all these objects so he would, next time he, came across them, he'd realize they weren't comets. He loved to look for comets, and these things looked like comets to him. So he said, I'm gonna just get rid of these things and make a catalog so I don't have to get confused by them. So it's called the Messier catalog. We're gonna click on it, and when you do, you're going to see M37, M35. These are the Messier objects. And again, each one represents either a star cluster or a galaxy or a nebula. Most of them require a telescope, but a bunch can be seen in a pair of binoculars. So you can use your app not just to identify individual stars, planets, and constellations, but also use it with a telescope to find these, what we call deep sky objects. That's another name for galaxies, nebulas, and star clusters. And the most well-known catalog of them called the Messier objects. One final thing I wanna point out is no one likes to read user manuals. Um, I actually did for this phone and discovered that it was very well written and very helpful. You're inevitably gonna have a problem with your app. It's gonna freeze up or you're gonna wonder how to do this. This manual is quite good. Just click on it and give a read through and you'll find an answer to your question. I'm certain of it. So that is how to use the app, at least the basic way to use it. And you can take me back live anytime, Jackie. Hello again. Good to see you all. And those are some of the things that uh, we're going to be talking about. Also, besides the links that you will see to the different things we've talked about, like Heavens Above and downloading the app in case you haven't downloaded the app, I encourage you to visit my website. You can just Google Astro Bob. And I've done blogs on these different topics. Uh, as a matter of fact, I just did one about the Starlink satellites. And you can go there, just type in Astro Bob Starlink how to, and I've got it for you step by step as well. So I want to make sure you have all the resources you need to be able to see these things that are in the sky. There's just so much up there that's so wonderful to look at and follow. And now, if there are any questions, I'm open to that. If anyone has a question, feel free to type it in the chat box and we'll ask it to Bob. And Jackie, was there a question or two last week that we received that we didn't have time for too? I don't know if you still might have those. I don't have them here. If you, the, those people are viewing and your question wasn't answered, go ahead and retype it. And we have plenty of time to ask it to Astro Bob tonight.
right, it doesn't look like no anyone questions. has a right. question. Last chance. All right, then I'll go ahead and we'll wrap up tonight's session. Just want to pull up my screen here. So just as a reminder to everybody watching, you can go to our voyagers.org Dart Sky page to find out more, or if you weren't able to pull up some of these links, you can download them again. And thanks a lot to Astro Bob for being able to spend time with us and show us how to view the night skies. So we'll see you all next week, same time, same place, four o'clock on Tuesday for our third installment of our Dark Sky series. Thank you, Bob. Thank you.